So this is our fourth day in beautiful Yukon. And thank you very much, Dennis, for having us here. No uh, it's been a treat. Um, we got into two new species of fish. And, uh, but coming up here, it, it wasn't just about the fishing. I want to find out what fishing in Yukon is all about and how it's managed differently compared to BC. Right. And uh, you're definitely the guy to talk to, right? Yeah, um, it's a, spent yeah. a lot of time thinking about it and working within it, yeah. Yeah, so let's tell, us, tell everyone about what, what exactly do you do um, in this field? Sure. So I'm, uh, I'm a fisheries consultant mm -hmm. and I, I do a lot of community-based fish and wildlife planning. Uh, so I develop a lot of plans. I've done a lot of salmon work right. in the past, um, but I'm moving more and more towards freshwater fish. So okay. yeah, I work with communities and help them yeah, we're, articulate their values in, with fish. With right. Fisheries, yeah. right. Now, my first impression in Yukon is that uh, the, the resources are abundant, very abundant. You, have, you only have what, 40,000 people living in this, in this area, not in even the that. Whole, in the whole Yukon. Right, yeah. and yeah. you have so many fish, as we saw in the last two days. Um, so what are some of the challenges you have right. uh, while working with the resources and people in this area? Yeah, no, we, we you know, I think we have, we have a lot of, I mean, we do have a pristine environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, nature is yep. abound for sure. Um, you know, there are places where there are lots of fish and really healthy populations, but we also have accessible areas you know not unlike other parts of Canada mm -hmm. where we have a lot of uh, you know there's there's there are some pressures in the resource right and also you know in terms of maintaining the health of particular resources like the genetics and the big fish and things like that there are there are definitely some pockets of, of, of um, or some areas where you know we, we are seeing some pressures that are changing the nature of our fishery, fisheries mm -hmm. And I guess what makes it, you know, to get right to it, what makes it different different in the Yukon, and I think is, is quite interesting, is we have we have settled land claims, a lot of settled land claims. So we have 11 Yukon First Nations, and um, you know, and they've been settled, um, mm -hmm. and they're self-governing, many of them, and uh, and in, and what that means is that there are structures in place where the public and the First Nations, um, you know, they have to co-manage these resources. Mm -hmm. And when you have a declining resource or changes in that resource. Right. And then all the changes around climate change, demographic changes, governance changes, fish behavior changes, um, that creates a lot of s stress right. on the way it used to be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. I guess as resources decline, um, you start seeing conflicts a little bit. Uh, yeah. um, you know, because different user groups have different interests, when you, yeah. different ways of managing yeah. the resources, right? Is, yeah. that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I, I, th and I think, you know, it's not, it's not unlike what happens in the Fraser, right? Mm -hmm. There are yep. different interests for sure. Yep. Um, you know, we don't have a lot of commercial, so commercial's not really the, the issue. issue yep. We are seeing conflicts emerge. Um, mm -hmm. Quite often they're quiet and they're under the surface. Mm -hmm. But I guess, and this is the reason I'm doing what I'm doing, because I, I do a lot of community work and I work with, with all groups. I like to think I'm kind of in the middle. <laughs> Yep. Um, and in doing so, I can sense some of that conflict and see it emerging. And we're starting to see it around moose and some of our sheep and our caribou and bears. Right. And it's starting to make its way into fish. Okay. Uh, you know, we have challenges around salmon. So yeah, yeah, we are starting to see some conflict. And that's, that's I guess, why we're trying to have these, these difficult conversations right now. Right. So this give us some examples of some of the conflicts that we're facing right now. Sure. Yeah. So, um, I mean, one of the ones, and it's really the catalyst for what I'm trying to work on is catch and release. Mm -hmm. So catch and release is one of those uh, clear challenges uh, with respect to First Nation communities and res with respect to the public. Um, and I'm, you know, I realize I'm generalizing a little bit, you know, every, there are so many variations within different communities, but First Nations generally don't believe in catch and release. Um, they believe it's playing with their food. Um, you know, there's a lot of cultural reasons why they don't believe in it, lots of story, lots of oral history, etc. And the public uh, believes in catch and release as almost the global conservation mm -hmm. ethic. So there's these, there's this clashing worldviews, right. and how that plays itself out, like in a in a management type scenario that you would be used to, is a slot size. Mm -hmm. So you know we've been fishing for two days now, yeah. and uh, you know you when you catch a fish within certain areas, uh, you have to you're forced to release that fish as a public angler. I'm mm -hmm. not talking about First Nations right. fisheries, and in re by releasing that fish, it goes against the First Nations uh, perspective within which whose traditional territory we're fishing on mm -hmm. and who also has a governance responsibility and a co-management responsibility in that area. So I think that's, that's the complexity we're dealing with, right. is different worldviews, 
um, different approaches to fisheries, and and that and and I find we don't create space for those conversations, and we don't have them together. Right. And I think that's that's what I'm trying to do. Right. So you have mandatory catch and release, which is what we just talked about, right? Yeah. As a conservation measure. Yeah. Uh, so we can have good recruitment in the population. Yeah. But we also have voluntary catch and release in recreational fishery. In the past 20 years, I enjoy catching and releasing fish. Mm -hmm. um, just because I don't necessarily need to eat fish all the time, right? right? But I uh, still want to go out and fish, catching fish and releasing fish, and that's right. part of my joy in sport fishing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so how how is this going to work out? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I guess part of it is we're 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 experimenting our way through. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I think there's there's a lot of validity to obviously the public. Um, you know, the, the First Nations have an Aboriginal right to harvest. Right. They have self-government agreements, they have case law, they have a whole bunch of frameworks that protect their right to fish. So we're not talking about that. That's mm -hmm. subsistence fishing yep. and that's, that's, that's protected. Right, yeah. uh, what we're talking about is the public. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm non-Indigenous, mm -hmm. um, I do work with First Nations, but so I'm trying to work with the public. So how's it gonna play out is, um, you know, we're gonna have to have, start having some conversations. So, you know, there are times where I believe the public, in order to, to protect a resource, it needs to participate in it. Right. We're not, we're, we're, we're all in worse shape when the public doesn't participate in a resource, in mm -hmm. my opinion. You know, you got to get kids involved, you got to get them touching, feeling, or else, you know, they know their, their fish comes from, from the grocery store wrapped in cellophane and they don't know yep. where it comes from, exactly. and we know that. Mm -hmm. And um, there are cases where, you know, you get them out fishing, and there's times when you're going to release fish because you're catching lots of fish, or you're catching the wrong fish, or mm -hmm. whatnot. So it's just, I guess, I, I think how it's going to play out is shared values. Yeah. I think we have to kind of take the time to identify those shared values, and I believe they're there. Yeah. Um, and once we have those shared values, you know, then we have these governance systems in place in the Yukon and in BC becoming more and more, and it'll become more and more in Canada, um, where you know they have co-management bodies. Yeah. And land claims set up co-management bodies. These co-management bodies um, are the ones that are supposed to make the decisions um, around these fisheries. So. Yeah, how it'll play out, I don't know, but we're just starting to kind of have these conversations. Yeah. Well, having, having clear, you know, having dialogues, I think is really important. Mm -hmm. I, I've seen that in, you know, when it comes to Fraser River salmon issues and, mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. And um, I think in, at the end of the day, even though um, our idea of fishing is quite different to First Nations, the, the values are very, very similar, right? We're talking about getting out fishing together as a family, yep. with friends, and uh, spending the time outside and yep. passing on knowledge. Passing on knowledge, um, you know, food feed, uh, feeding yourself, sustenance. Right. Um, you know, even the concept of ceremony. Mm -hmm. Right. Ceremony is a really important part of First Nations culture, yep. and you know, we all have our ceremonies mm -hmm. when we catch fish. Well, like two days ago when when, when pike fishing, you know, yep. we, we we released a couple of fish, we kept a couple of fish, we came back to your house and you invited yep. us in, and yep. we, we we ate fish together, ate yep. the fish that we caught together, yep. and we thanked and, the fish. Yep, yep, and that's all that's all part of it. It's very yep. very similar, just done in a very different way. Yeah, right? yep. yeah, so, yeah. There are definitely shared values, and I find it's it's kind of unlocking that that narrative mm -hmm. with anglers. I mm -hmm. find. Anglers, when we talk, we tend to talk about how many fish we caught or mm -hmm. how big they were or this, that, and the other. And, yep. and I think when you, unlock, when you start talking to anglers about why they're out there fishing, who they're fishing with, yep. and what was the, the really special part of fishing, it unlocks this beautiful narrative mm -hmm. that is not unlike what I hear in the communities. And I, I don't speak for First Nations, but I, I hear a lot of their thoughts and I, you know, I document them on paper and whatnot. And I think it is there. So it's just yep. trying to have that discourse. And, I guess we, you know, when you talk about meetings with with anglers, um, you know, we have meetings with 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 public, and mm -hmm. then we have meetings with First Nations. Yep. We don't generally have meetings together. Together, yeah. Or where there's a say, where there's a place where we can have these discussions, mm -hmm. and 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 so we need to do more of that. Yeah, and that's very similar to what we're doing in the Fraser River as well. We have the Fraser River Sport Fishing Alliance. Yeah. You know, we we're having ongoing dialogues mm -hmm. with First Nation bands in yep. the Fraser Valley. Yep. And that's what we're trying to achieve is having a round table discussion um, at the end of the day to work together mm -hmm. um, because we're all using the same resource, yep. work together to bring back more salmon yep. for all of us, right? Yep. So, so I, I, I'm, I've started an initiative called Respect for Fish mm -hmm. and I use the concept of respect because that is a value that is prevalent in, in First Nations culture, yeah. uh, traditional law. It's it's a it's very common in you know depend doesn't really matter where you are, yep. um, and I think that's something that the public can also also adheres to is is mm -hmm. the 
is that concept of respect. I think we can galvanize around the concept of respect. Um, you know, when I when we fish somewhere, I think of which traditional territory we fish on. Um, you know, things like that make a big difference. And uh, and I just try to fish with purpose. So you know, when we went fishing, we could have caught a lot of pike and released a lot of pike, yep. but we knew we were going to make sure we were going to take a fish to eat. Yep. And and catching one fish to eat is is really a value that everyone can get yeah. get around. It's mm -hmm. when we do it excessively, yeah. or we do it without respect mm -hmm. and and things like that. That's when it it falls apart, in my opinion. Yeah. So moderation with everything is is is, is good, right? I mean, catching and ha harvesting fish, both catching and harvesting fish and mm -hmm. catching and releasing fish. Mm -hmm. If you do it excessively, yeah. um, that's that's not good for the resource. No. And I think people need to understand that. So. Yeah. And then there's handling practices, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just you know. It, becoming aware of, of best practices around handling. So yeah. when we're forced to release a fish, regulatory catch and release, mm -hmm. and for example, uh, we do it in a manner that's going to ensure that we're reducing the mortality of yeah. that fish so that it, you know, it survives. Yeah. And so that's something that education and outreach is mm -hmm. something we can get behind. I'm not interested in developing regulations to shut down lakes, and I'm not interested in advocating for catch and release. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm, it's there so we can participate, we can have these shared values, and we can move forward together and yeah. and i think it's i think that the anglers have a lot of value to add in terms of how we should be regulating these and managing these fisheries anyways yeah so yeah it's just it's about having the dialogue good yeah and at the end of the day you know if people got to keep in mind it's it's not catching releasing handling fish is not black and white and there isn't a one what right correct way to doing True. it true right every situation every fish is different every yeah. situation is different yeah. and uh and i think that's really important to remember you, yeah. you, my message is always you, you do the best you can yeah. um, not every single fish is going to survive but you do the best you can yeah. for every single fish and uh and just try to do the right thing right? Yeah. so yeah. Yeah. yeah excellent um so what is the website for respect for fish uh, it's respectforfish.com okay and um yeah i've been working with uh with some support from the carcrest tagish renewable resource council mm -hmm. and the fish and wildlife enhancement trust yeah and um so i've got a i've got uh, a year of this under my belt and and we're we're, we uh, we did a survey in the Yukon, and I had a really large percentage of the angling population that uh, participated. So we're just going through that data right now, and we're gonna we're totally transparent. We're looking for partners, so we're gonna share all that information, and hopefully it'll help. Um, yeah, bring bring us closer together. Yeah. Um, catch and release has been a 30 plus year debate in the Yukon mm -hmm. that we really haven't wrapped our head around, and uh, so I'm kind of hoping that we can sort of alleviate some of those conflicts. Yeah. And it, we really need to do it because this is the future. We need yeah. to move forward together. Exactly, yeah. And um, yeah, so you'll be putting more information on that platform yep. uh, as we go along, right? Yep. Um, and I, I look forward to come back and see, see where this goes. Yeah, great. Um, there's great. so much potential in this area. And uh, you're right, just you got to work together and to, to make it better for everyone. Yeah, well, thanks for coming. And I've always enjoyed no. your channel and your message. and. And that's why, uh, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's and been a great week. Yeah. yeah thank you so much. No problem. I'm going to drive this boat through miles in. There's so many rapids. And I've never driven a boat before. But I have my license.